Hey guys, this is Classical Kill here, and here we're going to be doing a new series where I climb from silver to diamond. Here's the account, and let's begin. So it looks like in this game, we're up against a lot of gold too. So I would say high gold elo, around gold 2, gold 1 MMR. The account may be a little bit inflated because I played a few games on it, won them, so my MMR is going really high considering this is more of a fresh account. The core concept I want to capture for you guys in this game is going to be pathing efficiency. Pathing efficiency. Pretty much the core idea behind this word or term is where you're going to path towards a certain area with intent. So let's say, for example, we want to path towards top lane. The way you're going to do that is you're going to start on the bot side of the map around here, saying if you're at the top side of the map, and you're going to path from your blue to your Grom to your Wolves through here, Raptors into your Red into your Crooks, where you can clearly path into top lane here, right? So this is what we call a full clear. Now, the core idea behind this principle of pathing efficiency is you want to make sure that you're going camp to camp quickly, clearing your quadrant, and then making sure that you don't cross over where you want to go. So what I mean by cross over is, let's say this, we don't want to be doing something like this, where we do blue, going to wolves, crossing back over to gromp, and then pathing back over to towards mid lane to go to the top lane. So we don't want to be doing that. See how many times you crossed over here? You did blue, and then you cross back to wolves, and then you go down to, to gromp, and then you're going to decide you're just going to go path all the way up here. The reason why we don't do that is because you waste your most re valuable resource, which is time. Time as a jungler is the most valuable resource because the longer the game goes, the less agency you have for most junglers. Some junglers scale really well into the late game, but that's not every jungler. That's usually your full clear power farmer junglers like Karthus, Shivana, where they scale really hard. But for the majority of the time, your agency as a jungler takes place in the early stages of the game, where you can get that level advantage. You can get a fast level 3, you can power farm to level 6, and then gank bot lane who's going to be levels behind you. This is where you're most powerful as a jungler. That is why we have to be pathing efficient, efficiently. Not crossing over, going bot lane, and then mid, and then go back to your wolves. Because you're going to be wasting time doing that. The reason why you need to make a plan is so you know that you can clear the camps you want to clear without crossing over back to where you're going to go. If you do that... You're going to be wasting a lot of time and it's going to be losing you games. It's literally game losing. That's why you have to learn this fundamental. Now, there's tons of different paths you can take. For example, um, I really like this one where you can start red. Go to path over to your blue. Right. And then do crump. And you will be going back towards your wolves. However, the reason why this isn't crossing over is because you're still pathing in a way where you're collecting camps nearby each other. So, so if I do red and then I go straight to my blue, I have options. I'm level two at that moment. I can decide to either gank mid and gank bot lane, or I could just go and get level three, do my gromp. And then once I have level, a level three power spike, I gromp, I can decide to path mid or bot again. And in that process where I just go from red, blue, gromp, I haven't crossed over anywhere yet. I haven't passed, passed over the same place I've been without some sort of intent. So say you decide to just do your wolves. After your wolves, you have another option. You can consider going to mid lane. You can even consider invading the enemy jungle if that's a good idea at this point. You can look to counter gank from fog of war right here if that so permits you. You can decide to just do your wolves, and then continue on to your raptors. I really like this clear because it allows you to have a lot of options in the game, depending on whatever the game state is. Now, we don't have to go so advanced into these all these different clear paths. For this game, I'm literally just going to go into a very simple path where I go blue, gromp, wolves, 
Raptors, Red, Crooks into top lane gank. Or I can decide to go for the Scuttle Crab after instead of ganking. It's all dependent on what happens in the game after. But I'm going to keep it very simple for you guys and just do the simple path where you can just full clear. And if you know how to do your full clear correctly, you can get there pretty fast, usually faster than the enemy jungle if you're in this elo silver 2 which is what i'm trying to explain to you guys and you'll be able to win your games very easily just from your first base let's hop into game and show you guys what that looks like okay so unfortunately um this game i did not i did record uh, myself playing it live however uh what happened was as i was going to edit the audio doubled because I had settings messed up in OBS. So please forgive me for that. Um, however, I'm still going to review the game and I'm just going to go through my thoughts and really show you how I encapsulated just sticking to the core principle of this game where I just focus on pathing efficiently. Now, you see me place this word right here. That word, by the way, is just to watch out for the invade against morgana and versing a morgana on the enemy team it's actually a really hard game for me typically because caitlin morgana bot lane is really rough for vi same with silas in the mid lane and viego in the jungle and the only real weak, weak link or person i can go after uh, is the nar in the early stages of the game when he's not that strong so it kind of works out the fact that i'm doing it a full clear but just keep in mind, I didn't think through, make a plan at all when I was going into this game. I was just doing what I think you guys um, could do, considering if you just captured this core element of pathing efficiency. Not thinking about where I'm going, just pathing very efficiently, picking up whatever is free. If I see something free, is if I see something on the map that I think would be easily be easily be spotted by you guys i'm gonna go for it i'm not gonna go for risky plays or plays that were are higher in an, an advance to look for i'm just going to be going for simple plays very very simple stuff so here i'm just clearing my gromp um going towards my wolves looking at my buff lane briefly a little bit of camera movement there that's another skill that is very important i always teach my clients who are in lower elo that you need to learn how to use camera keys because um, it's much easier to just look at a lane and then go straight back to clearing that way. All right, so here we're crossing over to mid lane, through mid lane, and we get our level three after we finish clearing wolves. I look top lane now. I'm looking top lane because I need to see if um, this is gankable. Normally, as I'm crossing over to top lane, I'm deciding if this is good enough to gank right away. And I'll even skip Raptor sometimes. But I just really wanted to hone in on this pathing efficiently concept. So even if you miss gank opportunities, as long as you're pathing efficiently, you can still come out on top in these games. Um, keep in mind too, this is gold 2 elo, gold 1. This is not exactly silver, so these players are a little bit more advanced. So here I saw the, the NAR flash shop lane and some water cancer, and I know that if I can catch him here with Q auto E, he won't be able to escape me. Now flash auto E to kill him. Nothing too fancy there. Just landed my Q auto E and then flash auto E to finish him off. But you may have saw me attempt to go through the tri bush on the right side of the big rock. But then I walked behind the big rock and that was because... Mordekaiser's TP kind of made the Gnar start running back, so I had to cut off his escape. I simply just made a small decision change to my gank where instead of walking directly at him, I'm going to walk behind him. Here, I'm just going to reset after I finish my Krugs, um, drop this ward because I have no more use for it, switch to Sweeper. It might have been better to try to drop the ward where it can help Mordekaiser before I left, but I didn't want to waste any time. Remember... You always want to be really fast with your timing. It's the whole point of pathing efficiency. Now here, hopefully, hopefully, you guys would be able to see this fight. 
and be like, hey, all of these guys are low. I just came off a reset. I'm strong. And you could just walk over simply. Here's a Caitlyn. She used her E. Simple Q auto and she's dead. Nothing special. I just saw a fight happening. Came out of my reset and simply use my abilities. So all you really need to do to be capable of spotting this is a little bit of camera movement where you can see a fight is happening on the map. I skip my Gromp, but don't do it right away. And then I go and can pick up a free kill. Now I'm back to pathing. Normally here, I would be looking to do dragon. That's why I look at it there. But I'm like, nope, I'm just going to go back to my pathing. I know I'm really strong right now. That's what I'm considering at level five with the Dirk with a pot too. Like it's really, really healthy to do, sneak a dragon there. But I'm like, nah, I'm just going to go back to clearing. Looking mid as I'm crossing over. And the reason why I'm able to clear so fast is because I practice my clear. I've practiced it plenty of times. I have the video up if you guys need to see how to clear each camp efficiently or at least at a decent speed um, where you're not falling behind the enemy jungler. And here. Since I have no camps up, I'm just pushing into the river and seeing if I can spot anybody, Have some, put some pressure on the map. I see the gank mid lane. I'm not there in time to counter gank, unfortunately. Can't really do anything about that. My RE gets picked off, unfortunately. I was thinking for a moment, maybe I can pick off the Viego. If he walks into me, maybe a Q auto E and walk away. But nope, he just goes back to his jungle. I'm suspecting he's going to do his Grom his wolves now I waste a little bit of time here but i was waiting for a camp to come up anyways so it's okay like i didn't waste too much time looking for some deep vision and using the squire's bloom plant so i can just take it away from the viego and the ash actually spots the viego doing his grump which is really nice for us it will help more to avoid ganks but right now he's not really in a position to be ganked now again we know nar has no flash i just finished my crux nothing else to do Maybe I can look for a gank. I sweep the bush, very simple. Walk behind him just like the last gank. Just charge up Q while he can't see me. I land the Q auto E. Mortar Cares are also perfect. Now I can just wait for him to come back. In hindsight, I probably should not have autoed that minion so I can get behind him. But nevertheless, I get the kill. That's three kills now. Very, very simple. I didn't do anything special. I did just clear my camps, came top when I had nothing else to do and picked up a free kill. Now I'm gonna reset, I have 1500 gold. I'm gonna buy my items, get back on the map. Very strong now, I got Caulfield's Warhammer with a pink ward and a some boots to make me move faster around the map. Now I'm considering going to Dragon, you see I click over to it, but I just see my, my, um, my bot lane recall. So I'm not going to force going for dragon. I'm like, okay, if they want to reset, I don't have dragon control now. I'm just going to clear my camps. All my camps are respawning. Blue buff, Gromp, Wolves, Raptors, MR buff is just about to spawn right now. Again, nothing fancy. Doing the same thing over and over and over. There's tons of other concepts I'm going to teach you guys in this um, series here. I hope you guys are excited to learn all about the jungle fundamentals and how they can carry you from out of these lower elos. The reason why this will work so well, by the way, even if full clearing is not the best option, is because a lot of people waste their time in this elo. So as long as you're just collecting gold on yourself, you can really, really, um, you can really uh, accelerate the game. Because you're going to be just getting your items faster than everyone else. They're going to be going for risky plays that don't work. They're going to be missing CS a lot because they don't practice farming. A lot of just very tiny mistakes and fundamentals that the enemy team won't execute correctly will cause you to just have a lead over everyone else because you're clearing efficiently. Now here I kind of looked for a little bit of pressure mid lane. Um, I knew that Ari was having some trouble. I didn't do much. All I did was drop the pink ward. And that actually forced the Silas out of lane because he was scared of getting ganked. Now, because I started pressure top lane, my Mordekaiser is automatically winning the lane. He's got uh, quite a lead, two kills now. 
And since he killed my the top laner, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go for Rift here. I mean, it's a very simple play. I know I was saying just path, just do my, my camps. But hopefully you guys would be able to spot this. What if if there's no pressure in the in in the lanes, like say bot lane just died, say their top laner just died, always think about hey, can I go for this because um the top laner can't come and stop me from doing this? Absolutely, you can. And also, um, so that's pretty much a whole different topic. We're going to talk about that called priority. I used it a little bit this game, but I think it was easier to spot in this game because it was so blatantly obvious. Like the um, Nar just died randomly in lane so i can just walk over take rift then i clear my camps and now i look for another top gank by the time i'm top again mordekaiser has his alt and i'm just waiting here to get the kill on the nar again and now he's dead and viego can't stop me can't do anything here he tries to fight me here i'm like i have my mordekaiser with me i flash away a little bit just to try to get distance away from salas's burst and then Mordekaiser just cleans the fight up. He helps me survive. I I figure if I can land Kiba Auto E again on him, I can kill him. He runs over the wall. I'm like, okay. Now I just recall, spend my gold, get back on the map. Again, nothing fancy, nothing crazy. I get Ionian boots and a tier. Perfect buy. And of course the power the power spike of my eclipse. Well Diego is still sitting on a noon quiver. So normally that would scare me in my elo, seeing that. Uh I I also can't clear the wood I usually would. Uh, I don't like sitting on vision, but I can't because I've rift herald. But Morgana backs off. I saw her back off from the vision, so I'm like, okay, this is okay. Like I'm not being pressured here with the vision they have on me, so I'm kind of comfortable. Now I just go for this scuttle. Very simple. I clear the pink wood. And even though I'm walking back to my wolves here, I still got a camp, right? Now I can consider looking for bot lane or just go back to my wolves. See, as if I'm ever going to cross back over, it's because I, there's a reason for it. Right? Always think about, oh, is there something I can do here? It's not, I'm just going to randomly go somewhere and waste my time. I drop the Rift Herald. I clear the vision in the Dragon Pit. I'm not looking to fight here or gank here. I'm just using the Rift Herald that I got earlier. Nothing crazy here. He clears vision from that bush and there's nothing else to do. Like, I don't see a gank man. I don't see myself diving bot lane. Or Caitlyn Morgana is dangerous. But I see Silas coming down. I see Nar in Ari's lane. And so I'm like, hey, there's there's people here. Maybe I'll just wait and see if a fight breaks out. And what do you know? Ash lands an arrow onto the Nar and he dies. Q auto E onto the Nar. R onto the Silas. Follow up with another Q as he's trying to run away and he's dead. Try to cut off Caitlyn's escape here. Trying to go behind her. And she actually takes the fight with ash i'm not sure why but um she flashes over and she has nowhere else to go now like she had used her e and she used her flash so now she's gonna walk into the ash and she's gonna die very very easy like nothing complicated just queuing over the wall to cut off her escape and now everyone is dead on their team we go for dragon together as if as three people and after dragon is done i'm gonna go back to my camps and start clearing them Again, I didn't do anything crazy. I just saw that there's people in the area and I walked over to it. Just like the last time I got the free kill on the Caitlyn. So here I see Emilio dies. I'm not going to force myself to go over there and try to kill people. Like Ash is alone right now. There's no reason to try to take a fight that's a losing fight. I know it's losing because they have more players than we do. Like, if we try to fight there, it's going to be 2v3, where uh, it's just me and Ash versus their jungler and their bot lane. So that's not a smart fight to take. Going back to clear my raptors. 
you can see I'm highly prioritizing camps over aggression or anything else. Even though I have a lead, usually with a lead like this, you want to be like bullying the enemy jungler, fighting them on every camp they have. But nope, I'm just going to be clearing my own jungle very quickly. Even taking this crab before I take this fight with um, Moedekazer and the Nar. Then I, after I take crab, I'm going to go back over, do my Krugs, and then maybe look to gank the top, or maybe take my red, and then reset, because I have a lot of gold. Now, the upside of um, actually clearing like this, like power farming and just clearing all your camps very efficiently, you're going to get your pet really fast. Like, you're going to get your pet extremely fast, especially if you get, like, a little kill that can snowball you and just make you clear a lot faster. You're going to clear really, really fast, and you're going to get your pet, and you're going to get another power spike very early on in the game. Now, after I did my red buff, I just came over here for a quick second. And what I did was um, just covered the wave, the lane for Ari when she died. Nothing special. I could have just reset and then gone back to my bot side, but... It's just a little bit extra gold collecting those the EXP and gold from the minions under the tower. So why not do it? It's free gold. It takes like five seconds. I'm not wasting too much time doing it. Now, I'm looking for a bot lane gank. After I reset, my bot lane is going to be respawning soon. My gromp and my wolves. And there's nothing to do at the moment. So I'm just going to be checking if I can clear vision first. Maybe that bot lane steps up and they face check me. I go in on the Morgana. I'm super strong. Q, auto E, R onto the Caitlyn. Viego actually gets stunned by the Ash, which is great. I start walking back after Caitlyn's dead, so Viego doesn't keep DPSing me to death. And here, I see Nar walking up, so I just press Q. I actually miss the Q on him, but I'm okay because I have Eclipse proc'd on him, and then I get my Blast Shield, which protects me from him killing me, right? He can't burst me down. He's really weak, too. We've been, like, camping top lane. Now I'm just waiting, holding Q, I Q onto the Viego, get my another Eclipse proc, Q onto the uh, Silas, Q out E, he's dead. Nothing special. Like, if people are going to face check you and buy and you're that ahead, very, very easy kills. And right after that, they surrender. That's another thing about this ELO, like if you get ahead and they you kill people, they'll just surrender the game. Now we're going to go into a different portion of the video where I'm going to explain what other options I had, say if this is a higher ELO game, okay? I'll see you into the next part of the video. Okay, here we are back into the game. Um, and the whole point of me reviewing this part of the game is because I want to show you what other options I may have considered and done had this been a higher elo game what other advanced things you could be shimping, uh, thinking about just to give you guys an idea of what's upcoming in the future what other concepts we're going to be learning what other things that we can apply to our game so far we just talked about pathing efficiently this game now league of legends is all about piecing together these different um ideas and making them collectively as a whole and being able to spot these patterns that have high probability of success and executing upon upon those things now here in this game is kind of rough because i have a lot of bad matchups and the only good matchup i have or good like interactions i have with the enemy team is the nar mordekaiser Viego is really hard to to really fight. Silas can dodge my Q with his E. Morgana can always black shield my Q and lock me down with Caitlyn. It's really messy this game. I don't have a lot of gank options. So in a normal high elo game, I would opt to be clearing towards the Nar, but I probably would not have just done a full clear. I probably would have altered my clear to get to top lane faster than the Viego. So I could um, impact the lane that is easiest for me to impact in the first place. Now here, if you look closely, um, what happens is I notice that the Viego is actually starting on the same side as me. Now that means he could do a few things. Like 
he has. I'd be considering the options of his pathing as well. Now this is called jungle tracking. Even though we don't know where Viego is, we can assume that he started on his bot side of the map because his bot lane showed first. Um, so here, um, just after finishing Wolves and I'm, as I'm crossing over, I would be looking at this mid lane, seeing how Ari chunked down the Southers really low. Like that's a lot of good information though there. It would probably help me change my decision on what pathing I would take from here actually. Okay. Now, again, what I was speaking about considering the, um, the bot lane showing or the bot lane showing that they leash, you can tell that the enemy got a leash in the bot lane is because they, sh they came late to their lane. I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by that. Okay. So let's go back for a second. So we can assume that Viego is starting red side on the same side that I am because um, when his, their bot lane comes back to lane, they're coming late. And I can see that Nar is starting in his top side. Now here we can tell that we're mirrored just um, going base, based off the replay. And you can see how my assumption would be a correct, um, just based off of the small knowledge and intel we gain from um, the enemy top laner showing first and the enemy bot lane not showing. Now here, I would consider this play. Now, Viego could go for a gank mid lane. Usually Viegos don't full clear because he needs to assert some sort of pressure for the lane he wants to play for. And there's actually a big spot right here, a fog of war that I could abuse. So I would see Ari pushed up here and I want to keep my lane that has prio safe. So I would typically walk mid lane, just hide in the fog of war that's over here and just wait and see if Diego comes through again. Doesn't take much of my time. It takes maybe five to 10 seconds of my time slowing down my clear by a little bit, but it's very, very impactful. So I'm taking, I'm spending 10 seconds of my time doing something that could be extremely impactful. Counter ganks are really, really massive in this game. A lot of the times you can win the entire game just off a counter gank because the enemy jungler wants to gank that lane. You know, he wants to get that lane ahead, but if you're there to stop him from doing that, then you can kind of completely shut off his option and shut down his plan, right? Now, so see as I'm clearing my wolves here, um, I'm coming down here and let's check how the Viego would be. See how he's not even finished doing his Raptor camp and I'm already finished my wolves. This guy's actually sl clearing slower than me. Usually in higher elo, they'd be on top of their clear. And this is why I, I stress that you have to practice your clear because in situations like this, you need to be on time. So if I were to go for this counter gank and he win for the gank, then I'd be there on time. But yeah, just this is just to show like I'm ahead. I've already halfway finished clearing my raptors and he's just starting those wolves here, as you can see. There's so much pressure mid lane here. So normally I actually would not go for my red buff here. I would see how low Silas is and he's potential for a, a dive. Although dangerous, there's potential. So the safer option would probably go for an invade. Um, Vegos clear is not as fast as Vice to my understanding. And if Ari just, if I just ping my Ari, hey, let's go invade this guy at his blue. If you show up at his blue, he might be doing his blue or just finishing it. And if we can pick him off, it's very easy. You see our abilities, we both burst oriented champions. If I land my Q auto E, I'm doing almost like 400 damage. I have like 73 auto attacks. So my Q auto E is doing around like 400 with electrocute, maybe around 500. Um, it's a quite a bit of damage. Now, if you look at Char uh, Ari's ability, her charm, her W, her Q, if that all lands on a target, that's going to be around 300, 400 damage. And if you add that up, that's like 800 damage in total. Not even full HP Silas, as you can see, would be able to su survive that. Considering he's very low right now, around 230, 40 HP. If we, if Silas tried to come and help the Viego stop us from our invade, he would just die and it would be very bad for him. Like either of our Q auto E would kill Silas or Ari's charm 
um, QW would kill him. So he can't really, he's not really in a position to help the Diego friend for our invade, making the invade a 2v1 situation. Now, NAR could potentially rotate down. He could do that. However, because of how strong um, playing from Fog of War is, we would have a great and strong advantage. He'd be have to face checking us. Uh, the NAR would have to face check us because if we put ourselves in those positions, those those aggressive positions, it would be hard for NAR to really stop us from doing what we want to do because he's risking walking into the charm, walking into the, the queue, right? Okay. So now we know this. Um, this is another option that opens up, like understanding you have pressure and you have lane priority. It can go for an invade or even a potential dive. It can be scary because he still has flash. Like, there's some other variables. If he had no flash, I would 100% go for a dive because it's almost impossible for him to avoid as long as I play it properly. All right? Uh, instead, what happens, like, my Mordekaiser dies and then I just come up top lane. Now, I actually kind of misplayed um, against the Snar a little bit because I could have canceled this E. I could have I easily canceled this guy's E. Um... He has his E where he can jump on top of you and do two bounces. So if I just time my Q correctly, then I could have canceled it. But I really wanted to dumb this down just to really prove a point to you guys that you don't have to do complicated things to win the game. But normally I would just cancel his E and then he wouldn't have anywhere to go because he has no flash and he'd die. Okay, so he goes for the jump. I actually get an auto attack off as he jumps, which is really nice. Slowing him down with the red buff. Then I'm guaranteed to land my Q because he's slow. He's right beside the wall, so he can't walk to the right to dodge it. And he's slow, so he can't dodge it to the left. I land my Q out of E. He's really, really low. He's maybe one or two auto attacks off. Let's see. I think I auto him once here. And I could just flash E or flash auto here. But why not just go for flash auto E to make sure I get two points of two areas of damage on him like i could do my auto and my e so instead of just going for a flash e a flash auto where he walks out of my range after i can't kill him i go for the auto e a little bit of a mechanic there where you can sneak in extra damage with your auto reset and also as he's walking away my e will still come off because my e actually extends my range my auto um range so i can hit him as he's moving away from me look at this he's only 15 hp away but rather than risk just autoing him or risk just eing him, I get auto e, so it's like 180 damage. So he's for sure dead, right? And then nice, we even nicely spot the um, Ash um, shooting the hawk shot by the Viego. We could assume that Viego was coming here, so it's kind of actually dangerous for me to walk through that path because he could have counter ganked me. Like if we look over here, you see his P path towards Scuttle, even though. Um, I was on vision like he could have easily I could have easily face checked him here That would be pretty dangerous, but luckily that's not what happened I would have to look out for that in higher elo because a Viego would be 100% Be looking for me after I just finished a play like that seeing my HP is at 60% he could easily win that fight And I had to blow my flash too. like I would be in a pretty bad situation if I was forced to fight me there here all i did was reset and coming back to base and as i'm coming out of my base i would heavily consider just doing going straight into dragon here because i have a dirk and i'm really strong level four of my red buff i still have a pot as well i believe but um see this fight breaks out and then i end up going to that but i would heavily be considering going for a dragon at this point in stage in time um you see this fight fights like this will always break out in lower elos where they won't really use their abilities the way they should. So this is just a freebie here. Normally, it's really hard to even queue into here because Caitlyn has, she'll still have her flash, she'll still have her E. I'm walking into vision, but she's completely distracted by me here, right? She's looking at the, my bot lane and she used her E just there. Normally, like they'd see me charging Q here and they would just flash away. Um, Milo, um, his Q kind of lands and I kind of like chain CC it, but it wasn't true. She did have time to flash, but she just wasn't mechanically ready for that play. Or she didn't predict the fact that I would just Q her right there and die, right? But she, normally I, I wouldn't even pick up the kill there because Morgana would drop the black shield on her. 
um I, my q wouldn't cc her she would flash away and i wouldn't even be able to follow um with an auto attack that's how rough it is going into that matchup like even landing q is not good enough and after this position I'm, i would even consider going for an invade here because i just killed the caitlin and the morgana was low and vehicles coming off a reset and i pressure bomb lane like I'll have priority because I'll be pushing bot lane. Like, I could steal the Krugs or the Raptors here. Like, I could go for this. Krugs would be a little bit more risky because they're just coming off of a reset, right? You see um, Morgana is resetting there. And Caitlyn's coming back. Since the death timers are really short in the early game, you got to be careful for the, these types of invades you go for. But in high elo, we always look to punish everything we can so we can get every advantage and every edge over the enemy um, jungler. So even just taking the Raptor camp away from the Viego would really slow him down. And it would be really nice because I'm taking away Golden EXP from him. Also, I want you to consider this. Whenever you mirror, like you start on the same side as the enemy jungler, you can and they full clear and you full clear, you can always assume your camps are going to spawn at the same time. So you see his Krugs are up right now. My Gromp is up right now. His Raptors are up. My Wolves are up right now. So you can kind of just use like some basic deduction and say oh this is where this guy's going to be pathing towards it's most likely going to be pathing towards his crux because i know that his crux are up and he's pathing in the same direction as me right so here if you see i'm starting my grom and um see i would even consider like i said before going for this dragon um because like i Probably would sneak by, sweep it, and look for the sneak dragon play because I can do dragons so quickly, right? Um, we even have the scuttle crab for vision. I know that there's a pixel bush ward, so I can easily avoid that ward. Um, it's kind of hard for Viego con to contest me. I'd spot him trying to come over and um, do his through the, the tri bush. And even if he showed up on dragon, I could easily get away, or I could even fight him because. I'm really, really strong right now. I also have a pot in my inventory. I didn't use my first healing pot, so the dragon play would be... I would con definitely consider that. Now, here I would go... I would also consider looking for this mid play again, where I can hide in Fog of War and look for counter ganking. Um, Viego would be a little bit off the timer because, remember, he um, he would be looking um, to come off of the reset, and I'm a little bit ahead of him, right? He had to reset. I'm a little bit ahead. I have tempo. But yeah, you could definitely, again, as you're click coming back over the mid lane, just being efficient, spending a little bit of time, consider going to um, hover this Ari and see if she gets ganked by the Viego. Um, that's another play I could go for that I'm just not consider. I'm not even thinking about not even doing this game because I'm just thinking about the core concepts, right? Like Ari is blowing her, some, her, her abilities now, so maybe I wouldn't go for it anymore. Ah, that's the really bad thing about Viego. Like, He's giving away his position now, like he's on his Raptors. We know that for sure, because his shroud is showing in the lane. Um, so we know for sure that he's on Raptors, and um, now Ari can easily avoid the gank. And if he's showing on, telling on himself, like he's there, he most likely won't go for the gank because he's showing us in vision where he is. Um, you also have to be aware of if you're showing and when you show and give information. Because you can actually use that to manipulate people into doing what you want to do. Now here, um, this is was me just because I had nothing else to do. I was just um, looking to clear vision, maybe pre put pressure on the map somewhere. Now I'm stopping here for a reason. I don't want to just continue giving you all these advanced concepts. I just want to really help you guys focus on the course concepts. And this is just some little insight in what's to come into the future and what other concepts you can start thinking of, thinking about. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. This is Classical Kill out.